Love you guys. Sometimes I like meetings like this, believers meetings. Amen? <clears throat> sometimes uh, it's just, I was telling mom, sometimes some of the most powerful things that can happen in our lives are in small meetings sometimes. And uh, I've had some of the most powerful things happen in my life just talking with two or three people. You know, <laughs> just, you know, just power. There's power uh, in faith. People that believe, and I know we got people in here that live by faith, amen. <laughs> Praise God, hallelujah. Turn with me over to Psalms, Psalms 149, Psalms 149. Man, this morning was excellent. Uh, it was kind of one of those in-your-face messages by Dad, wasn't it? <laughs> it was good, though. And, you know, he, <clears throat> I sit over there and I laugh sometimes and because I know my dad, and I know the kind of man he is and the kind of person he is, and he, like he even uh, referred to it today a little bit, uh, talked about himself just a little bit. He's the kind of guy that likes to smooth things out and keep things, you know, peace, peaceful and peaceable, and, and uh, you know, he, he loves people, and, and he wants to, you know, see the best in them and try to work with that, you know, that's just how he's been, you know, and and I've watched him over the years do that with people. So when I hear him say some of the things he says up here from the pulpit, I know that it's, it's the Spirit of God because there's just certain things. Now, I'm not going to say he's never got mad or lost his temper or lost his cool or whatever. You know what I mean? He's a human being, just like he said. But sometimes I hear him say things up here, and I think to myself, that's got to be God because my dad would not say that that, that way to, certain, to people sometimes especially a mass of people, you know what I mean? See, he talks to me different than he talks to, to some of you, you know what I mean, because I'm his son. But, but when I hear him do some of that, sometimes I go, man, that's got to be the Spirit of God because I know his mindset when it comes to people and how he wants to help them. But that was good. We needed to hear some of that this morning. We need to eat the meat of the Word, man, and not just be, you know, uh, complaining, griping, you know, living in our diaper Christian all the time. You know, we need to, we need to pick ourselves up and let the Lord... Teach us and get in his presence. You want to grow real fast with your walk with Christ? Just get in his presence, man. Just make it, like he said today, make it mandatory that you spend time. Not just a quick, you know, devotional, that's good, but make sure you can pull aside if you can at least an hour or something where you just sit there and still peaceness and quiet before the Lord and just meditate on him and let him love you and talk to you. It's the most powerful thing you can do. Amen. But that was a good message this morning. I need to hear some, he needed to hear some of that stuff that he had talked about this morning. It just, it just refueled me and ministered to me. Amen? Tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about, I kind of feel led to talk a little bit of, tonight about praise and worship and about our tongues. Amen? And the damage that we can do to the enemy's camp and the damage we can do to the enemy by using our mouth like a two-edged sword, like it says in the word here, and, and use it to where we Break the power of the devil and over the enemy in Jesus' name. Did you notice that, that when Jesus <clears throat> would <clears throat> confront a demon, that he, uh, now, I, now he, you know, he, he, would, he would just say simply come out. Loose him, let him go, come out of him in Jesus. You know, well, he, I don't know if he'd say in Jesus' name. He'd just say come out because he is Jesus. And that is his name. So I guess he didn't, you know, we're so used to saying in the name of Jesus, you know. But he would just tell that demon to come out. You know, and if the demon would mouth off and say, well, I'm legion, I'm many or something, he didn't care. He just said, well, all of you come out. You know what I mean? And so he'd rebuke the devil and command it to come out, and it, and it, and it did. Well, see, <clears throat> Jesus would use his mouth. He didn't, you know, he, he had all the power he needed from his Father, he, just like we do, amen? We have the power from the Father God, just like we do. We have, Jesus talks about all that. I don't have time to get into that tonight. You know, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 2 are very specific on the authority we have as a believer and all that good stuff. But Jesus had enough power to do that. We have the same power that Christ had in our lives because he was rose from the dead. It says he's quickened our mortal body, praise God. He's given us power. Now, the deal is, is we've got to learn and we've got to grow in that. And when Jesus, I'm not going to get off into talking about casting devils out, that's part of it, but Jesus used his mouth to kick the devil out. If Jesus is using his mouth to kick the devil out, we've got to use our mouths to kick the devil out. And sometimes we've got to stand for some time sometimes. And we've got to stand our ground sometimes. 
And we can rebuke the devil. Maybe we're, maybe we're coming against him, take, you know, telling him to take his hands off our kids or, or you know, our family or our grandkids or finance, whatever it is, or our city, whatever it is. Sometimes we've got to stand in faith and just stand there and continue to speak that. See, the devil, there are things. See, the devil will come in and he'll create strongholds. And he'll come into a city, he'll come into a family, or he'll come into some kind of situation where maybe the people, the family, or the city, or whatever, not, not, not knowing what's going on, he, excuse me, he sneaks in, slips in, and sticks his paws in the place, and creates a stronghold. And so sometimes there's, there's times where you're dealing with a, a demon that has been there for hundreds or thousands of years, and he's got his tentacles in, He's got his, his claws in, and he's saying, I'm not moving. This is my territory. This is my place. But see, listen to me. There's been time after time over your life, if you can only see in the spirit realm, where there's been a demon that's maybe done that to you or your family or your kids, and you, by being a blood-bought child of God, came against that devil with the blood of Jesus, and that devil had to loose his grip, and he had to go to where he came from which is hell, amen? So there's been times over the years where maybe you have come against the enemy that's coming against your family or your job or your, your city or whatever. You've come against those things. You've ran them off because you used your tongue as a two-edged sword from the Word of God. What it is, it's the Word of God on one side and your authority in faith as a believer on, and you speaking the Word of God on the other side. And the Word of God works every time when you speak it by faith and you stand your ground. Listen to me, folks. We don't go out and pick a fight with the enemy. We don't go out and say, come on, devil, I'll take you on right now. That is stupid. Don't do that. It's like Pastor Tom Terry, he said he prayed one of the stupidest prayers he's ever prayed in his life back when he first started pastoring. He prayed that God would send him demon-possessed people. And I understand why he said that, because he wanted to help him, but he needs to be more specific about that prayer, he said. He said, all of a sudden, we had, you know, Raider Nation walking into the church, you know, people with eye patches and pitchforks, Arr! you know, and all this kind of stuff, he said. And then he said, I realized, God, what's going on here? And he said, you need to be more specific about your prayer. Send people that are demonized that want help. So he said he started praying that, and things started to change, amen? So we got to be careful what we say. But... <clears throat> He's given us authority. We don't go out and pick a fight with the devil. But if we see the devil messing around on our ground, or our city, or kids, or family, or whatever, or even your own mind, you've got to take authority over him, and you've got to command him to go in the name of Jesus. And then as you do that, you ask the Lord, God, why is this happening? What's allow Am I allowing this out of ignorance? Am I allowing this with my mouth? Am I allowing certain things to happen? Or is it just a flat-out attack from the enemy? And, and I, I'll guarantee you, 100% of the time, the Lord will show you how that door opened in your life. Or how it got opened maybe in your city. Maybe God's put your city that you live in on your heart. Because I know we have people here from different cities. Maybe God's put that city on your heart. And He wants to show you how the door got opened in that city. So you can come against the devil or the demon that's trying to rule or reign and dominate in that city or that region. Now, I'm not the kind of person that... And there might, some of you might be opposite of me with this, and that's okay, because God calls certain people to do that. But I'm not the kind of person that God's really necessarily called me to be a person that goes out and starts to take over and, and destroy strongholds. Okay, now, God will call certain people as intercessors to go do that. I mean, He will give them an open heaven. I mean, He'll show them what's going on, and He'll give them a prayer assignment. And that's their prayer assignment, man, is to come against that spirit that's trying to take over that nation or that city or whatever god can do that with us okay and if he does that to us he trusts us okay now there will be things god will show you in certain seasons and certain times maybe about your life or your family or maybe even your man maybe even your city your neighborhood or something he'll begin to show you things and he'll want you to start speaking over those things but you notice Jesus, 
he didn't just come up to the person. He used his mouth. David is another example. He didn't just go up to Goliath and, oh, God, I hope I hit him. He went up to him, and I guarantee he wasn't. Is that all right with you, Goliath, if I throw this rock? No. Is it okay if I cut, you know, you, you feel like dying today? Are you sure? You make sure, you know. No. He said, I come to you, you uncircumcised giant. You have no covenant with God, and because you're messing with God's people, I am going to cut your head off today, and the birds are going to eat your carcass. And he didn't say it polite. He said it with the authority and the power of God that God has given him. But you notice where David started. He started by worshiping and praising. That's where he started. That's what gave him. That's it. That's true. He took on the lion and he took on the bear. He had the anointing of God on him to do that. But he started using his mouth with worship. He started by spending time. That's the key, folks. He started by spending quality, not quantity, quality time with the Father. And God used him with his voice in worship and praise, and that anointing grew stronger and stronger, and he began to find out who he was, and he started to come into what God had called him to be, amen? It didn't happen overnight. It took some time. It took quite a while for him to come in to the fullness of what God had called him. It was a journey, and there were some bumps in the road, and there were some tough times, and man, he even blew it when he got into the will of God. He blew it, messed up, made mistakes, had adultery, had a man murdered. You know, all this stuff happened in his life. But he still was honest with God. He went before the Lord and he said, God, if there's anything in me that's not of you, you rip it out. You notice he still used his mouth even for that. Our mouths are so huge. No pun intended. Some of you will get that too in the morning. Just don't call me. Amen. Our mouths are huge sometimes. Well, all the time. When it comes to speaking the word and when it comes to dealing with the enemy, when it comes to, to praying for our family or for whatever it is that God has called us to do, our mouths are big. But David did not come to Goliath just measly and mumbling. He came to Goliath with the word of the Lord on the inside of him and the anointing of God was on him. He didn't go out there, you know, in his own natural deal i guarantee you he knew the word of the lord and it was time for that and that anointing rose up on him and he went out and did it we've got to be sensitive to the anointing and listen here's a key right here this is huge remember this the key to understanding the anointing and to learning the anointing is to spend time in the anointing which is the presence of god he'll bring that anointing You'll learn to recognize when it comes on you for certain things. I would say this to you tonight, and I, and I would say that you remember this tonight. When you feel the presence of God coming to you, because there's times during the day where you'll just feel it come on you, and it's like, whoa. Sometimes it is like goosebumps. Sometimes it is like an adrenaline rush. Sometimes it is like a heaviness where you'll feel the heaviness just in your body, your legs, or your feet, or something like that. You'll feel the wind of the Lord. You'll feel the anointing. When that happens to you, Stop right where you're at if you can and ask the Lord, why is this on me? Is there something that I need to do? Is there something you want to say to me? Or is there something that, 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 that I need in my life for this time right now? Because God doesn't do that. You know, he, he does it for a purpose, either to bless you, to say something to you, or to use you to do something. That's why He puts His anointing on you. It's not just because... He does it for a purpose. And so I would say tonight that when you feel that glory, when you feel that presence, when you're in that presence and you get an understanding of that, ask the Lord, what is that? If you want to know how to move in the anointing, you've got to be with the anointed one. Amen? So our mouth, our tongue is very, very vital when it comes to the kingdom of God, when it comes to the natural worth we even live here, when it comes to darkness, demons, when it comes to all this stuff 
that tries to mess with you and mess with your family, you've got to know how to use your mouth. And I'm going to tell you right now that praise and worship is the key for everything you need on this earth. Praise and worship, period. A lot of folks don't want to take time in praise and worship. They want to call the pastor. They want to grumble. They want to complain. They want to talk about other people. Or they want to talk about their problems all the time. That's why they always have problems. Because they glorify their problems by talking about it all the time. You have what you say. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are the power of the tongue. And you will eat the fruit that you speak. Whether good or bad. Now, some of us, I know, mom, it's funny because mom got up here and started talking about this. She had no idea what was going to minister on tonight. She got up here and talking about complaining, how she was a professional complainer and all this stuff. <clears throat> but listen, a lot of us deal with this. And I'm one of them. And I'm having to choose to change my verbiage. I'm having to choose to change how I say things, when I say things, why I say things. And what I mean when I say things, I've got to pay attention to that. And I've been working on that. I've been choosing to work on that. And I'll tell you, it's not as hard as you think it is once you make that choice in your mind that you're going to use your mouth for the things of God. That you're going to use your mouth to praise and to worship. That you're going to be like that little shepherd boy, David, sitting out in the field, tending the sheep, watching over the sheep, keeping out the bears and the lions and all the, all, the, all the enemy that wants to come in and tear the sheep up. He sat out there and he worshipped and he praised and he loved on the Lord and he developed a relationship with God that he didn't even know the years, days down the, he down, down the road that God was going to use him as a teenage boy to cut the head off the giant so God's people can be released and go into where they need to go into. Why can't we be David's? Why can't we live in the realm of the glory, in the realm of the anointing, in the realm of the authority that King David had? Why can't we live in that? We can. If King David could come from heaven right now and stand before us and take the mic from me, he would say, know who your father is. That's the key. There isn't nothing. It's coming to the point now with me that there is nothing on this earth more important than me spending an intimate time with my Father God. Everything else is just there. My, my, my family, I love my family. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love their activities. I love what they do. I enjoy my life. I enjoy the ministry. I enjoy my family, you know, your friends. Uh, just I enjoy things in this city, this planet. But I'm going to tell you right now, none of that stuff's comparing anymore to who God is and what He is in my life and how much I need to know Him to even come close to what He's called me to do to finish my race. That's the only way. But you've got to. You've got to block out everything else that doesn't matter in your life and get before the Lord. And ask Him, what do you want me to do? I know you want me to spend time with you. I know you want me to have a relationship with you. And I have responsibilities. God knows you have responsibilities. God knows you have things to do. You have work. You have kids. You have family. God knows you have all this kind of stuff. But listen, you can't even do that right without spending time with Him. I've learned that lesson. Amen? And you don't beat yourself up over it. You just make a decision to come before the Lord. Get before Him. Be quiet before Him. Spend time with Him. Let Him develop you and mold you and make you and shape you into what He's called you to do on this earth. And I know that I'm preaching to the choir tonight. I get it. There's a lot of people in here that do this and have an understanding of this. Maybe there's some in here that need to do this more. Maybe this is convicting you or talking to you and you're getting an understanding of this tonight. Maybe that's true. But go with it because that is the only way you're going to be able to fulfill the whole purpose that God has for your life is knowing who the Father is and knowing His voice. Some of us He deals different with. He'll, some of us He gives you pictures. Some of, you, some of us He gives you dreams. Some of you He gives visions some of you you'll hear his voice he'll speak to you on the inward on the inward witness you'll hear on the inside of you that nudging of the father and he'll, he'll teach you or he'll show you some things listen god wants us to grow in those gifts god wants us to grow in those things he wants to be personal with us he wants to be personal with us
Hallelujah, man. He knows every hair on our head. <laughs> he knows us. He loves us. And He'll protect you and keep you. Praise and worship is vital. Now look at Psalms 149, verse 1. Psalms 149, verse 1 says, Sing to the Lord a new song, and His praise in the assembly of saints. Let Israel rejoice in their Maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. Let them praise His name with the dance. Let them sing praises to Him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people. Say, the Lord takes pleasure in me. Mike Purcell didn't say that. The Word of God said it. The Lord takes pleasure in in his people. Well, God wants to smoke me with a baseball bat. No, he doesn't. Well, God's mad at me. No, he's not. He loves you. It's his pure joy and his pure will for your life to fulfill what he puts you on this earth to fulfill. That's his joy. That's his purpose. That's how he looks at you. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. That joy that the Father has over us is our strength. Just picture that in your mind for a second. Jesus rejoicing over you, loving you, laughing over you, rejoicing and, and being full of joy towards you. That joy, His, His, His love, His, His uh, authority in your life, His peace in your life, His strength in your life gives you strength because He joys over you. Even when the Father talks stern to us, even when He convicts us, or even when He uses someone to say something out of their mouth by the Holy Spirit that hits us right between the eyes and we know on the inside we need to deal with that issue or deal with that thing. Even when He does that, it's out of love for us. It's out of love. There's no father like the real father. My dad, my natural dad, he's an awesome man of God. He loves God. He loves me. He loves people. He loves doing what God's called him to do. But his love doesn't even compare to the Father's love for me and for you. I know it's, sometimes it's hard for us to comprehend that because we live on an earth and we live in the natural and all that. But he would want me to say that. I'd want my kids to say that about me. That my dad's love doesn't even compare to my father's love. He loves us. He takes pleasure in us. And it says He will beautify, the latter part of verse 4, He will beautify the humble with salvation. Verse 5, Let the saints be joyful in glory. <laughs> Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles uh, with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment, which is the word of God. This honor will have all the saints. Now let me say something about that verse 6 there where it says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. And then it goes on to say in verse 7, to execute vengeance on the nations. Now, your human strength, without acknowledging God's might, does not win spiritual battles. Your human strength will not win spiritual battles. You have got to get over into joining your voice with God's voice. What is He saying about your life? What is He saying about your family? What is He saying about the nations? What is He saying about your kids, your job? What is God saying about it? And then when you hear what He says about it, or maybe you've never heard Him say something to you about it, then get in the Word and find out what the Word says about it. Line your voice up with the Word, because that is God. It's the word of life. This book brings life. The Bible says this book will never pass away, will never die. 
It's the, it says there's so much to God, there's not enough pieces of paper to write on. There's so much to God. He has so much knowledge. But see, we can't do it in the natural. We've got to get over in the Spirit. And then it says here in verse 7, to execute vengeance on the devil and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with change, and so on and so on. That there literally, it means enemies mentioned here uh, in the New Testament counterparts in Paul's list of Ephesians 6, 12. Now listen. And in the generalized works of the devil, which is disease, poverty, demonization, and so on, all these enemies can be countered in a worshiper's life by God's reign released through heartfelt worship and praise. Oh, come on, somebody. The devil messing with you? The devil messing with your kids? The devil messing with your finances? The devil messing with your body, maybe? Some kind of sickness or disease? God says in here that if you want to counterattack that and demolish that, start to praise and start to worship God. You will have what you say. What you say. That's why the Bible says, take no thought saying when the enemy comes against you you're going to die of cancer don't take that thought and then say it i think i got cancer oh but pastor mike you're just saying that doesn't mean you really mean it come on guys god god wouldn't have said take no thought saying then if that's the case now i'm gonna tell you something i said this before and i'm gonna say it again and i'll probably say it a thousand more times while i minister I will not get up here and preach something or speak about something that I've never experienced. I've experienced a trial or a test or a storm, just like all of us have at one point or another, maybe even more, more than one. But when I was going through leukemia in 2008, I'm going to tell you right now, and, and my wife should tonight, she can vouch for it, my mom can vouch for it, some of you can even vouch for it. I would sing over my body. I would sing by the Spirit of God. I never found a song that, that sung about white blood cells. It wasn't on Bethel Worship. It wasn't on Hillsong. It wasn't on any of these song lists. I would sing by the Spirit, and they would sound corny to some people. They'd look at me like, what is this guy singing about? I was singing about my own white blood count because that's what I needed. And I would sing stuff like, I see my white blood count marching. I see that army growing. I see it growing on the inside of my bone marrow. I mean, I would sing all kinds of stuff. Well, that's just crazy. Faith, yeah. What I say, people tell me that if you have leukemia, how crazy that is. Because it ain't crazy. Faith without works is dead. My faith was in healing. My faith was in 1 Peter 2.24. My faith was in Jesus Christ dying on the cross, shedding His blood, not only for sin, but for sickness and disease. He demolished death, hell, and the grave for me and for you. And so I would sing, and I would praise, and I would worship. Fear would try to come on me. I would praise, and I would worship, and immediately that stuff would break and would leave. But I'll tell you something. I noticed that I've noticed in my personal life, speaking from my experience, when I would go a few days or so without getting over into that praise and that worship, things would start to change on the inside of me. I started getting angry. I started getting agitated. Fear would start coming more and more, and, and things would start happening. Why? Because I'm not staying over in the praise and worship realm. Seriously, you think about how much time. Now, this is going to, I hope this don't make anybody mad here just tonight. Because I've had to think about this myself. Think about how much time we waste watching TV or something like that. It's okay to watch TV. Nothing wrong with that. You enjoy certain things, whatever. That's fine. But compare how much you worship God with how much you do other things. I did that, and that slapped me right in the face, man. 
So now, so funny, I was having a conversation with Bridget this morning about this. So now what I try to do is I try to stay in contact with heaven all the time. As much as I can. I try to acknowledge, Lord, here I am, Lord. And I'll just be going out through the day, you know, singing, I've got the life of God in me, you know. Or I'll just, you know, I go around my house doing that all the time, just singing, you know, thank you for the Holy Ghost, you know, just all kinds of stuff. I try to do and I get that from my dad because my dad does it all the time. That's a good habit I picked up from him. It's just singing. You know, yesterday we were out fishing, yesterday morning. And I was kind of in a bad mood. I got up early and I was tired. And I, I kind of didn't want to go, but I went because I know Shane was going, so I wanted to go hang out with, with Shane and my brother and my dad. And we went out. And I got out there, man. I was kind of just waking up still, you know, and I was tired. And I got out there and first cast or first couple casts I threw out, you know, I'm hung already. Got hung on something under the water. And I got mad and I just... Get, snap the line and slam the pole on top of the water. And then my brother goes, that's going to help, which that didn't help at all. Your little brother mouthing off to you, you know. But I just chose to ignore that and didn't say nothing. And I said, I, should, I knew I should have came out here. I said that to myself. I should have just stayed home and, you know. Dad's standing right there. Within five seconds, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He starts singing this. And I'm going. Rrr. And he just kept singing it. He kept singing it. And finally, you got the joy of the Lord yet, Mike? You know? Yes, Dad. You're right. Shouldn't have acted that way, you know. Then I caught a fish and caught about nine more. And I felt good. Praise God. Hallelujah. But see, just... It's a little funny story, but just the atmosphere when someone starts singing about the Lord. Now, you've got to make a decision, obviously. I mean, you've you got to choose in your mind. Are you going to act like a nerd or are you going to be on fire for God? You know what I mean? Are you going to act defeated or are you going to act like you've got a living God that, serves, that, that, that you serve and that loves you? John 10.10, 10, He comes to bring life and life more abundantly to you. That's what He says. We believe it or we don't, you know? Even when things look crazy around us, things are coming down, the Word of God is still the Word of God. He's still going to protect you and keep you. You know, I had a vision back about 10 years ago. And this, actually not a vision, it was a dream. I had this dream and I was standing in like this big city. And um, I was, it was like New York, Chicago, something like that. There were skyscrapers all around me and I was standing out in, in this, on the street. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, these... These buildings turned into like these uh, like demon looking things, and they they had like they came alive and had eyes, and they just started looking at me like they were trying to come down something like you'd see in a cartoon or something weird like that, you know, and and I remember looking up to the heavens and I go Lord, and as soon as I said that, I felt myself lift up off the ground, and when I lifted up off the ground, it was like. Something like you see in those alien movies where they, woo, they suck you up into the spaceship or something. It was something like that. All of a sudden, I felt this presence come on me and lifted me up. And as he lifted me up, I was coming up off the ground. And, and it was instant. Woo, I was up above these skyscrapers. And I remember saying, Jesus, or something like that. And when I said that, those skyscrapers just started crumbling to the ground. Like you see those buildings implode when they explode them, you know, to get rid of them. I started seeing them do that. And I woke up from this dream, and I thought, what in the world was that all about? And the Lord started talking to me about, see, it doesn't matter where you're at, what you're doing. When you call upon my name, I will always deliver you out of the hand of the enemy. And that's what the Word says. That's biblical. He'll, he'll, he'll deliver us from the pit. He'll keep us from the snare. Amen. I mean, there's, there's Scripture after Scripture about Him promising protection and, 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 and keeping us. And see, listen. Don't beat yourself up tonight and hold yourself in condemnation. Some, we're all at different areas spiritually in our life, guys. We're not all the same. We're all different. 
There's things you know about the Word that I don't know about the Word. There's things I know about the Word that you don't know. There's things you've experienced with the Lord that I've never experienced. There's things I've experienced that you've never experienced. So we're at different places. God knows that. But all He requires is that we keep our heart towards Him, that we pursue Him, that we seek Him, that we read, like this morning in in, uh, Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And He'll add everything in your life that you need for that moment. He knows our future. He knows where we're headed. He knows. But we got to choose to be on His path. Proverbs 3. He'll direct your path. When you acknowledge Him. When you go before Him. And one of the biggest ways that we can grow is through our mouth. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Jesus again said, come out with his mouth. They obeyed. The devil has to obey your mouth and your authority. Now, I've been hearing a lot of stuff preached lately about holiness and about being holy before God. There's been a lot of people that have left that. And now you can get over into legalistic stuff about that and all that, how you dress, what you look like, what you do, what you, you know, all that stuff. Forget all that. I'm talking about your heart before the Lord. Your heart is your heart before Him. That's what matters. And if your heart is before the Lord, you've really said, here I am, Lord, I'm a mess. I give you everything. Take it all. Because I need help. I'm honest with myself. I'm honest before the Lord. Lord, I need help in this area of my life. I really do. And when you're honest before Him, He will instruct you. He will give you the ingredient that you need. He'll give you the wisdom, the counsel, the instruction that you need. To come out of that, whatever it is, if it's a mind, a a path, if it's something, a hindrance in our mind, or if it's a stronghold from the enemy that we didn't know, or whatever. I mean, you've heard me share that story about that revelation I got from him about mind habits, old mind habits. That's how you break off that anxiety and that fear and all that stuff that's been coming against you because you've given to old mind habits immediately. But he said, break those off. That's why. And you know what? I didn't have to go to, uh, you know, pastor and have him cast the devil out of me or do anything like that. I simply said, I got it, God. I understand what you said, old mind habits. So when whatever situation comes up that triggers that old mind habit, don't give in to that old mind habit. Just know that it's a falsality, that it's not even real. It's a lie from the devil because this is what the Word says about that situation. And I'll tell you, when I got that revelation, it changed my life. Dad just asked me the other day, about a week ago, how you been doing, man? How how is that? You know, have you had any anxiety, fear, anything coming? I said, no, Dad, not since that revelation. Has it tried to come? Yeah. But I know how to resist it. Because the devil's a liar. He'll give you what you need to get breakthrough or experience breakthrough in your life in the certain areas that you need it in. Our job is to rest in the Father. That's our job. To rest in Him. To trust Him with all of our heart and to lean not on our own understanding. Okay, so it says here, and I wrote this down, praise destroys the works of the devil. When you speak the word, now listen, you can speak the word in singing. Now, some of us might not have the best voice. That's understandable. But you know what? God don't care. Because you're singing to him from your heart. And that's what he cares about. I'll just be quite frank with you. Some of you might not believe this, but it's the truth whether you believe it or not. We could get somebody up here 
beating on a tin pot, ding, 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 and worship the Lord from their heart. And if people are mature enough, they'll yield to the Holy Ghost and get over into the anointing, and the anointing will come because they're worshiping from their heart. Not because of how cool they are on that new saucer pot, pack, a pot. Ding, ding, you know. It's a heart thing. I know. I'm not, I'm not, you know, the next American Idol. I understand that. The next voice. I get that. And that's fine. I don't give a flip anyways. Don't want to be. I don't care. I'm doing what I want to do right now. This is where I have fun. But I know that when I get up here and I grab the mic and I start to sing unto the Lord when we're in a corporate anointing, I know the anointing is going to flow because it's a heart issue. Just like anybody else that gets up here and wants to give before the Lord and worship the Lord, the anointing is going to come. The presence is going to grow because it's a heart thing. So when you speak the word, it brings judgment to the enemy. It brings judgment to the enemy when you speak the word. Maybe some of you don't like how your neighbor is acting. Start speaking the word over your neighbor. Point over at the house and say, you will get saved or you'll move and leave me alone. Your dog will run away or... No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. God loves dogs too, amen? All dogs go to heaven, right? Remember that show? Yeah. Or that cartoon? But listen, I heard Brother Hagin say this. And it's biblical. He said, if you don't like what's been going on in your life, check out what you've been saying. <laughs> That's powerful. Well, I want my husband, or I want my wife, or I want my kids, or I want my parents, or I want them to come to church and serve God, but God, they're just stupid, and they're just rebellious, and they're idiots, and they're sinners, and they're... And blah, blah. That's what it is. Man, I hope I'm not offending anybody tonight, but that's just the truth. You know? Everyone's kind of laughing, so I guess I'm not in too much of trouble. But, but it's just the truth. Now, I understand we have emotions, and there are certain things we've got to deal with. If someone is acting goofy and crazy, you've got to deal with that if you can. You know, I, I get that. You've got to tell them the truth. Hey, quit acting like an idiot and get your, get your mind right. You know, sometimes we've got to talk to people. That's just the way it is. We've got to deal with things sometimes. But listen, if you're just, you know, if I'm walking around saying about my son, man, that guy, the kid's a loser, he's an idiot, he's lazy, he's a bum. Guys, he might not even hear you say that, but you're speaking it. You're creating something there that you, that, that you don't want and you don't want your son to really have if you think about it. That's powerful stuff. I've had to repent several times over certain things I've said over family or, or my kids or, or even some of you guys or even, you know, myself. I've had to repent, and I know you have too probably. Amen? But our mouths are huge, man. They're powerful. They can be a weapon against the enemy, or they can be, a <laughs> they can be something the enemy uses. To hurt us and to hurt others. Now listen. Some folks just don't understand this, and, I, and, I, and we understand that. There's, there's people out there that maybe aren't serving the Lord, and they don't understand this. There's even Christians that go to churches that don't even... They never hear this preached, ever. There's a lot of churches that will not even talk about your mouth. They just talk about the fluffy things of God. And that's okay. It's good to know the fluffy things of God and the good things of God and all that. But our mouth is the key to how we live on this earth while we're here. Our mouth is the key to how much God uses us while we're here or not. Do we use our words to love or do we use our words to curse? Do we use our words to bless or do we use our words to beat people over the head with? I 
I've noticed, and I've been paying attention, there's a kid that I know, and he was just here two weeks ago on a Wednesday night named Nathan Taylor. He led worship. Some of you were here, some of you weren't. That kid is 20 years old. If you were at Walmart with him, it would take you. If you Okay, let's just say you went into Walmart with him to buy a tube of toothpaste. Quick and easy, right? Walk in, you locate. I want Crest. You grab it. You go to the counter, you pay for it, and you're out of there, right? It would take you an hour to an hour and a half to do it. I'm just being honest. Because he loves on everybody in that place. Now, I understand not all of us are like that. I get it. We love people, but we're just, we, just, we, don't, we don't flow that way. And that's okay. That's how, the Lord, that's how he knows the Lord wants to use him, so he does it. And that's fine. But he just loves people. I mean, he just wants to love. And he sees results of people getting out of wheelchairs, people's backs straightening up, legs healing, all kinds of It happens all the time. He posts, he, he shares on social media all the time about what the Lord did for some lady in Starbucks or whatever. But I've noticed that love, you can say words out of love to somebody, and they might not like it, and they might get angry and say, take a hike. Or you can say words out of anger, and you might get punched in the face. But a love tone, a tone of love to somebody, can change a whole atmosphere. God's so good. Even when my dad would spank me when I was a kid growing up, he did it out of love. It hurt my butt. It didn't feel good. But he did it out of love, and it, cha- it would help my heart. It would change my heart because I saw why. Because if I continued to do this, it was either going to kill me or... Something was going to happen. He told me not to run out in the street because there's cars, and I, and I did it. I could die. He had to get my attention, and sometimes pain gets our attention. Going through leukemia got my attention concerning my love walk, folks. I'm just being 100% honest with you on that one. God didn't give me leukemia. Oh, Mike, your love walk's out of line. Here's blood cancer. <laughs> he didn't do that. It's not the God we serve. We understand that. But I learned something from that while I was in that. I got before the Lord and said, what's going on here? This ain't supposed to be in my body. I'm a child of God. I serve you. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm preaching. What is going on? Well, since you're going through this, Mike, I'm going to deliver you and help you and heal you because my word says so. But since you're going through this, you need to check out your love walk, brother. Or son. He probably called me son. Not brother. Son. So we go through things, we deal with things, but our mouths are just like, they're the key. What James say? Your tongue's like a big old, your tongue's like a rudder of a ship. I mean, you see, you, you can see some of these big old ships, these, these cruises and things go on, and they show the rudders, those things are not big at all, and you think, how in the world does that thing steer that big old monster? But our mouths are powerful. So powerful. <sighs> and, I'll, and I'll tell you, here's just some wisdom that I'm learning myself. <laughs> if you get annoyed fast with certain things, get rid of it. If you can't handle Fox News, don't watch it. If your blood pressure goes through the roof when something said, don't watch it. Just cut it off. I'm learning that flying off the handle verbally and emotionally doesn't work anymore. It kills me. It destroys me. It hurts me physically, and it hurts me mentally, and it hurts me spiritually. So I'm learning how to take things. You know how some of it's just like a pinch of sugar in our coffee or something? I'm learning how to take just a pinch of certain things sometime, and then that's it. I don't let myself get over into just raw anger or say something. And believe me, I'm as guilty as the day is long about saying something out of my mouth that isn't right. 
over a person or people or a group or whatever. You can ask my wife. Don't ask her, but just then just say that. Yes, yeah, see, see her after church. <laughs> She'll spill the beans. But we all are guilty of that sometimes. And God forgives us. Just get your heart right about that and walk in love and, for, and repent. And God forgives us and helps us. But we should grow from that stuff. We need to get out of that childish stuff and use our mouth for adult stuff, kingdom stuff, glory stuff, God stuff. Amen? So when you speak the word, it brings judgment to the devil. And another thing God spoke to me, praise brings the glory, guys. Praise and worship brings the glory. It brings the peace and the presence of the Lord in. I love that scripture, and I take it literally where it says here we read about, it says, um, where is it out here? I just saw it. Where'd it go? Hold on. Are you kidding me right now? Where'd it go? It was right in front of my eyes here. Where, where is it at about? It says here, we just read it. No, praising them on their beds. Where's that at? Verse 5, yes. Good job, Jesse. You're paying attention. Glory. You get a star. Hallelujah. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. When you go to sleep, when you get up, just worship the Lord. Rejoice with the Lord. Thank Him. Lord, I thank You for today. Thank You, Lord. Thank You for Your love on my life today. Thank You that You just blessed me with my family or You blessed me with my kids or Lord, thank you. you know, just, just thank Him. Love on Him. Thank Him for the peace, His peace on you at your nighttime hour when you go to bed. Lord, thank you for your peace that's in the room tonight, God. If you have trouble sleeping, sleeping thank, thank Him for angels just comforting you in, in, in the bedroom at night as you sleep. Just love on Him. Thank Him. Now, I know a lot of us in here are praise and worshipers. A lot of us in here understand that it's good to sing praises to the Lord. It's good to praise Him as you're going throughout your day, just talking to Him. Lord, I love you. I praise you. We do that. A lot of us, do, probably almost all of us do that on a regular basis. That's part of our life. We, you know. But I just want to share this with you tonight because I believe it's encouraging you, number one. And number two, I want you to see and just encourage you and remind you maybe that your mouth lined up with the Lord brings judgment to the enemy, guys to the demons, to the devil, to the powers of darkness that are trying to infiltrate your life or infiltrate your family or your city, it brings judgment. Now, this morning when I got up during praise and worship and I said, we pull out our sword and we cut the head of the enemy, uh, we cut that enemy's head off that has created a stronghold in this city, in this region concerning drugs. Guys, I did not get up to say that. I didn't even know I was going to say that. I would never say that without the anointing of God on me to say it. But I, it just came out of me as we worshipped. And it wasn't just for fun. It was legitimate to defuse the enemy, to destroy the enemy in this region. I didn't get up this morning going, I'm going to come to church and come against that, that demon that's holding people in bondage concerning drugs and all that stuff. I didn't even, that wasn't even on my mind this morning. But we got in here and begin to worship God, and, and that's what the Lord wanted to do. So we joined together as the army of the Lord, and we went after that, and we did that by speaking it. And it, people in here agreed with that and put their faith, we put our faith together, and we spoke against the powers of darkness concerning that. And I saw in the Spirit, and some of you probably did too, I saw us pull that sword out and cut that thing off. Well, does that mean that drugs is going to stop tomorrow, Madeira? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that spirit's coming down. And people are going to get saved, healed, and helped that have been addicted for years. And God's going to deliver them and help them. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see people struggle and hurt and suffer. So I'm praying that God will send people here that want help. Because there's a lot of you in here that used to be on drugs and you've been delivered from drugs. You understand what I'm talking about. There's a freedom there that you get. 
You get delivered, praise God, by the blood of Jesus. There's all of us in here that can help somebody some way concerning coming out of darkness and coming into the kingdom like we're in. We all have a part to play, guys. So start speaking and praising and worshiping and thanking God for what He wants to do in this city, what He wants to do in your family, what He wants to do in your life. Start thanking Him. Use the Word of the Lord to destroy the kingdom of darkness. When you see the devil acting up out of somebody, you don't got to go cast it out of them. Just say, maybe even behind closed doors, I take authority over that spirit that's ruling their life. You shut your mouth when I'm around. In Jesus' name. You will not demonstrate your power or your goofiness in my presence. Now, not everybody wants help. Not everybody does. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it, but you can take authority over the devil in your presence. The devil tries to come around you and cause a bunch of junk and strife and all that. You take authority over that. Amen. And you don't back down from the devil. He loses. If he was going to defeat Jesus, he would have defeated him. It didn't work. Read Luke 4. Jesus laughed at him and said no and walked on and did what the Father wanted him to do. Amen? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Don't turn there, but listen. James 1 says this, verses 2 and 3. It basically says this in a nutshell. Count it all joy. When you are in trials. You don't count it all joy and get happy. I didn't get happy. Yes, I got leukemia. It's messing up my blood. I didn't get excited about that. I counted it joy because I knew what the end of it was. I knew what was going to happen. I counted it joy because the Father's healing me. He's restoring me. I looked at the manifestation that was lying ahead in my life. I wasn't happy that I was in that situation, but I looked at what God was going to do in that situation and how He was going to use uh, me to help others. And there's several people over the years since then that have gotten healed of blood diseases that I've prayed for over the years. <clears throat> Robert Williams, he comes here sometimes. It was like in 2009, 2010, right after I got healed of that junk. I'm standing up here preaching. I'd never seen that guy in my life before. It was his first time here. I just kind of happened to look back. He was sitting on the back row, and I heard the Lord. As soon as I looked at him, I heard on the inside, blood disease. So I stopped, and I said, sir, can I, do you have a blood disease? He said, yeah, I got hepatitis C. And I said, well, the Lord just spoke to me that. Let me pray for it. And he walked down the aisle here, and as soon as he got to me, I just stuck my hand out. I said, in Jesus' name, and when I did, he hit the floor like somebody shot him. I mean, he hit hard. I don't know if Jim was ready or not. I don't know if Jim was here that night or not. I don't know, but he probably was. And he laid there under the power of God for a while. Service was over and all that. And then about a month later, it was on a Tuesday or Thursday. I was down here at the office. And the front door opened. And he came in. He goes, you remember me? And I go, yeah, you were here. I just, I just prayed for you. And he said, yeah, well... I went to the doctor, and they can't find any hepatitis C in my blood at all. Hallelujah. God totally healed him. That's one, of the, that's one of the testimonies I share a lot when I pray for people that have some kind of blood disease or something like that because the power of God's real when it comes to that kind of stuff. Some of the things that you've gone through in your life, some of the trials and tests you've gone through and came out on the victory side, and you've, you've got victory in those things in your life, you can use those experiences to help people that are going through whatever that is. Maybe they're the same thing. You, were, you, you can connect with that way. You can use those testimonies, those experiences to touch those people by praying for them. There's an anointing on those things. When I tell people, yeah, I got healed of leukemia, there's an anointing on that because I'm testifying to what the Lord did in my life. And there's an anointing there. There's an anointing on those words. Your testimony is anointed. What God has done for you, share with people. There's anointing on that. It isn't just words. They might look at you and say, yeah, whatever, see you later. That's not on you. You release those words. You release the truth in their life. And they'll stick with them. 
Come on, guys. Think about it for a second. There might have been times where you know you were being rebellious and, and someone said something to you that was the truth. You're laying there in bed at night going, oh, man, I know that's the truth. I shouldn't have did that or I shouldn't be doing that. Or, I shouldn't. Come on, man, the truth will hit you right between the eyeballs. Thank God for that. We need the truth because why? When we continue in it, it will set us free. Dad talked about that this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I will rejoice in the Lord. Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19. Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19. You don't have to turn there. I'm just giving these out. Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19. Rejoice in the Lord always, and I will joy in the God of my salvation. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Thank you, Lord. So, I say this. I'll let Tammy share something real quick that she's needing to share. But I'll say this. This week, this week, want to grow in that part of your life, in your praise and your worship. Want to grow a little bit. Want to grow in the, in the times you spend with the Lord this week. Make a conscious effort to just set things aside. Go ahead and fast your favorite TV show. And just go get before the Lord during that hour that it would be on. Just make, a, make, make an adjustment maybe in your life that you need to make concerning that. And just see the results, man. Powerful results. Hallelujah. Did you need to say something? Yeah? Yeah, I'll let you. I trust you. Wait, let me look at your eyes make sure... I sense that there are some of us here. Don't take this lightly. Don't take what he's saying lightly. Um, sometimes we get up here on a Sunday night and, and we're listening and we don't we aren't doers of the word. But I feel as though there are some I was challenged by it. Because there's some things that God's been talking to me about since two thousand eight. And this is um, about new things. New things are springing forth. Now do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Well, if we're constantly dwelling in the past, and looking in the rear view mirror, and people ask you, hey, what's up? How's it going? Same old, same old. This happened today when I was talking to a lady, and it reminded me. But in 2008, Pastor started talking about new beginnings. God, golden glory. And there was a lot of stuff, prophetic stuff going on, and I'm visual. I see stuff like that. And then I caught on the news last night that there's actual, because of the floods and the fires, and they're finding gold. California's gold rush. Hello? Is that prophetic? Is that a new thing? Does that encourage you? It encourages me that what we say prophetically, God performs. If he's telling you, you have a new beginning, don't look in the rearview mirror and dwell in your past. Because last night, oh, this is a long one, Michael. I, I was looking, take, <laughs> sorry, I'll be quick. Um, I was driving home. It was sunset. The sun was so blinding and beautiful, I could only behold it. It blinded my eyes so that when I looked in the rearview mirror, I saw absolutely nothing. So inside of me, I had a perception do not dwell on the past. You've stepped into something new. It's new. And Jiminy Crickets, I went right over the railroad tracks. I crossed over. So right now, we're in a new thing. Whatever that means to you. Don't go around saying, and, and you know, I'm not jumping on your toes because this challenged me a little bit. Um, because you have to watch it. You get lazy with your mouth. I have new things. I've come out of the wilderness. I'm in a new season. God's going to use me in a mighty way. I have a new house. <laughs> I were talking about that earlier. We have the new things as a church, as a body. Amen? That's true. And that's right, because Rosh Hashanah the other day, what was that, uh, September, um, t was it 20th? Yeah, the 20 21st? 
20th or 21st? I can't. Thursday. Okay, so what was Thursday? The tw 21st. The Hebrew calendar, it's the year 5778. 5778, the number 8 is new beginnings. Amen. So we have. Now, let me say this, because you said what you said about um, uh, the gold. Okay, now you're going to trip out on that that thing I share with you, Charlie Champ's word, because that's a lot of it, what it talks about. So when you get home, listen to it. If you're, on, if you're on Facebook, I posted it on the Believer's Church Facebook. It's also on my wall as well. But Charlie Champ, he's a prophet. Actually, he's going to be with us next month, the 13th, 14th, and 15th here for special meetings. You can't miss those meetings. They're going to be so prophetic. But he had a word about California uh, on on Thursday. I think it was Saturday. Thursday or Friday, one or the other, but he had, he, he had a dream. He fell asleep. He had a dream and a vision about California, and he shares it on there. So if you get a chance, watch that because it talks about what you just shared about gold and different things like that. You just got to listen to it for yourself. I can't explain it, but, but we're in a season of the prophetic, and we're in a season of turnaround, guys. We truly are. And our words are going to steer that turnaround. And we're going to have the fruit of our mouth. And I'm saying that in a good way. We're going to have the fruit of our mouth in a good way. What we decree and declare, we're going to see that fruit come to pass. And not only are we going to be able to eat from that fruit, but others are going to be able to eat from that fruit. And that's biblical as well. Psalms chapter 1, you can read it right there. You'll be able to eat from the fruit, from the tree, from you. You've planted yourself by that water. And you've grown into the things that God wants you to grow into. People will be able to pick from that tree, and you'll be able to eat. They'll be able to eat of your fruit that you're producing. Thank God, and all the glory goes to God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Man, I believe that. Yep, that's been prophesied a few times about being a heart of California and us being the life source in this in this state. Praise God. This church, Dad said it today. We're a praying church. We move in a lot of prayer. We pray. We understand how to do that. But we also move in a lot of healing. And people coming and getting healing, not just physical body, but also their mind and just families and things like that. God moves in that way with us. We're like a hub here, guys. We truly are. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. Praise God. Glory, glory, glory. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus set me free. Satan thought he had me bound, but Jesus set me free. That's one of my favorite songs. I sing that song a lot, man. Amen? Lord, I just speak the blessing, the favor, the anointing, the glory, Let's get all wild. The honey, the oil, hallelujah. The joy of the Lord, the new wine. I just release it in Jesus' name over your people. And Lord, the people that aren't here tonight, I release it over them as well, Lord. They're part of us. And Lord, I thank you for health, deliverance, finances, peace, strength, wisdom, knowledge. I thank you that it flows in our lives and in our families, Father. And, Lord, I thank you for the love of the Lord just to be shed abroad even more in our hearts. Hallelujah. I thank you that we love on others, that we see others by the Spirit, and we're able to bless them and release the word of the Lord in their lives this week, Lord. Give us God appointments, divine appointments, Lord. And I thank you for helping us grow, Lord, as we praise and we worship you. And I speak blessing in Jesus' name, a fruitful week for us. In Jesus' name, amen.